Hello and welcome to quarter three, September 2023, Next Tech's quarterly release party. We're here today to get energized, and this specific segment is all about dermatology. I am one of your hosts, Cassie Cronin. I am a regional sales manager, and with me, I have my solutions consultant, Royce Kral. As you go through today, we're going to go over some updates of the company as a whole, some new products, and overall, all things Next Tech. As we dive in, our main mission, and has been since day one, to simplify the delivery of excellent patient care. Our job at the end of the day is to make your job easier by providing amazing care to your patients, and we're here to help you do it. We have over 16,000 providers, we're in over 60,000 specialty users, and we have over 5,000 practices under the Next Tech umbrella. As you can see here in the middle of the map, we do have an award. We are the gold standard um, of EHR for the America Academy of Dermatology's Data Derm Gold Recognition. This is an honor that we do not take lightly. We're very, very proud of it, and we're super excited to continue down that path. As we dive into the Termatology solution, we know it is a single specialty-specific solution that sets the bar in the market. Here's how. Simplicity, technology that enhances and streamlines workflows, not forces workarounds. Aesthetics. Full aesthetics functionality for quoting, packages, commissions, and gift cards. Support and service. U.S.-based customer service, along with dedicated client concierge, resulting in a 98% retention rate. That is huge, because not only are we bringing practices into the Next Tech family, but they're often staying there and enjoying it. Patient experience, acquire, convert, retain, and engage patients with robust patient engagement. Now I'm going to turn the time over to Royce to do a live demo. Thanks, Cassie. So, so I logged in. First thing that I want you guys to see is that we are in a web browser. It's a true web-based product. Um, so what are we looking at? You know, Starting at the top, we have our quick access panel that tells us what patient we're looking at. We have some more de demographic details about the patient. As I mouse over these areas, you can tell that there are links that'll take us to the appropriate area of their account. And we've got our patient warning. It's a multi-use kind of system here. You know, this tells us important things about the patient. Or when you're charting, you can indicate your follow-up, and the front desk staff will instantly know that this, like for example, this patient needs to be scheduled in three weeks for their Mohs biopsy. Beyond that. We're looking at the scheduler. Scheduler does what you want. You know, you have as much control over it. Leave it open, template it out so you know exactly where all your appointments are going to go. And there's all kinds of flexibility in there and in between. Now, um, now we have our patient that we're focused on. We can follow, they'll have them follow us through the different modules. We are looking at our schedule. You also are going to have a to-do alarm system for internal tasking, entire access to your patient database. Communications for, you know, breaking down a filtering up list of patients to engage in different ways, you know, all your settings, full on billing with real time integration with the clearinghouse, which honestly is far beyond anything that I've seen on the market, full report suite, inventory and the rest. So, you know, we're looking at a scheduler does scheduler things, but there's a couple tools here that we have built to try to make your life easier. Uh, one that we've been getting the most positive feedback on is the check in and check out center. This guy shows you, you know, a snapshot of what's going on for your day or any day you want to look at. Now we see in the far left column, all of the patients who are scheduled today. We see everybody who's currently in the practice, everyone who we've seen or no showed. Now there's a bunch of information on this page. Uh, the first thing that we see is our appointments confirmed. I can expand this and get a glance to see by, based off of these icons are telling me who has done what on their portal accounts. And speaking of the portal, that's a big, important area for check-in, right? We need to be able to streamline that and know what each patient has done and how to handle them when they come in. So when we select a patient to check them in, we get an information panel that pops up at the bottom. We can see if the patient has filled out their paperwork on the portal, specifically which forms. We see if they have insurance and if their insurance is good or not. You know, and this is a real-time check. It's gonna check for you when you enter the insurance, when you schedule a patient, the day of the appointment and three days before, 
So, you know, there's never any worry about this stuff when you're, you know, in those situations, especially at the beginning of the month when insurance changes. So um, what's happened on the check-in check-out center here, you know, we're gonna, let's say we wanna check this patient in, we'll mark them arrived. This is gonna be the call to the clinical staff, letting them know that there's a patient ready to be seen. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a quick second, hop over to my iPad and we'll pick up from there. On the right-hand side, we have, um, starting at the top, you have EMNs, electronic medical notes, I uh, think, you know, maybe you didn't sign every chart while you're in the room with each patient. Maybe you have a scribe that did some charting for you and you have to review and sign that off. Or maybe there's an MD that signs off for everyone. This is designed to handle all of those situations. If I click on that, we're going to see all of the EMNs that I need to pay attention to. So on the left-hand side, we see the patients in chronological order that we're seeing. And this is the charts that were done and need to be reviewed by me. That way, we're making sure that nobody is falling through the cracks. You're always going to be warned when there's charts that haven't been completed. Going down the list, full bi-directional lab interface, all labs can be handled from the iPad. I'm gonna show you that in just a little bit here. Then your to-do alarms and direct messaging will also live on the iPad. Uh, one more quick thing in the uh, top left, we have a room manager where you can room your patients and track how they move through the practice. So I'm gonna grab a patient here, look at a patient account. Everything that you need to see about a patient is one click away. The left-hand side is going to be the majority patient information, you know, demographics, internal notes, appointment history, and stuff. Right-hand side, it's going to be clinical data. We're looking at their most recent visit right here. We also have their lab history, their to-do alarms, their photos, which are nice, so you can, you know, maybe show progress while you're in a visit in clinic with a patient. You can send this to the patient portal as well. And uh, the last thing that's really important here is in the very top right corner is the summary. Uh, this is where you choose the important stuff that you want to review about a patient before you see them so you don't have to actually open up their historical charting you're going to have the history of anything that you want to see here that you've documented historically for this patient now i'm going to open up and just kind of walk through a real quick and basic derm consult visit so on the left hand side i'm going to click where it says create emn everything from here out is fully customizable from the way that i have my charts grouped here to every element of every chart so let's just take a quick look at one of these. I'm just gonna grab my very basic derm visit note. All right, so this chart starts with a little bit of patient information at the chart. This is fresh out of the box. I haven't done any customizing, so it just has a couple pieces of data, the basic stuff. Then this reason for, vision and reason for visit in patient words, that will come from the portal. This is literally what the patient filled out. So the first time I'm gonna to actually touch this chart after opening it and reviewing you know, what, the patient information, we'll just touch our HPI area here. And we'll fill this out. So we can do stuff like, you know, we can track multiple concerns at once. You could do something like you know, a follow-up for alopecia and also a new problem for eczema today. And you can track multiple issues. This item is set up for five, but you can do more if you want. So let's say we're doing a new problem for something more generic like a uh, spot of concern, sounds good. You know, we can further define here in the text box. You can dictate right with an Apple Pencil. I uh, will say they found it on their, you know, upper back. It's been there for weeks. You know, there's some symptoms. You know, it's worsening, but it's moderate. And, you know, maybe they haven't done anything to treat it so far. If they had, we can go through the modifying factors and give more details. Now, moving forward, I kind of want to show off what's happening in the background here. You know, we kind of click through a grid. Obviously, there's ways to you know, further defined with the text objects there. But if I hit the preview button in the top left here, we can see that just making those selections turn the HPI area into a, a little paragraph for you. And you have full control over that sentence formatting. It's totally customizable, but just want you to see what it's doing for you in the background there. So next we're going to choose our diagram. I'm going to grab, you know, a 3D body map here. Let's do this real quick. You can use any diagram you want. These are just some built-in 3D maps. Let's uh, we'll grab a smart stamp and we'll grab something to go with. Uh, we said spot of concern, so let's do like a unspecified neoplasm. All right, stamp that on there. Now more stuff happened in the background. Uh, next is creating your visit findings table. We've got our diagnosis. We've got the location that came from the diagram that we just stamped on. You know, if we need to further describe this, we can. The assessment is already filled out. We can further define that with some text. And what are we doing today? Let's say, you know, we're gonna do a biopsy on one site and then, you know, we'll observe and wait for results. And we can further define this. We can put them on a medication plan, give them steroids, whatever makes the most sense, but we'll, let's keep it simple. Now, since I said we're going to do a biopsy, 
the system is going to, because I want it to, it's going to just start a lab for me. Now this brings in the anatomic location and uh, the, your initial diagnosis from the chart. And from here, you know, you can send this straight to the lab, you can print your recs, you can print your results, and you can print specimen labels right from the iPad. It's super nice, super easy. You know, if you have a label printer, just throw this guy over there, print it out, slap it to your specimens, send them on your way. You know, from here, just to finish this off really quick, we'll just fill out what we did with our biopsy. You know, we did, you know, we used a punch, closed it with nylon, you know, add the charge. So we're going to have, um, if I click on the left-hand side, you may have noticed that there's a little, the coding icon has a green indicator on it. Open that up and show you that we do have our diag and our CPT code on here already. This is going to go to the biller as soon as we're done with the chart. And the last part is, uh, you know, we can take photos of the biopsy area. I'm just going to grab an existing patient photo real fast. Uh, maybe we'll grab a Mo's photo for fun. Use that, you know, make any indications on here with your charting tools, use stamps, whatever makes the most sense. And we're going to finish this guy off and just sign and lock it or sign it without locking if you prefer. You do not have to lock it in order to sign or to charge it. You lock it when you're ready. But from here, we'll just sign it and we'll actually be done and on our way. So that was just a real quick walkthrough of what's going on with the current state of Next Tech for dermatology. If you guys wanna dive any deeper into that kind of thing, just let us know and we'd be happy to set up a full demo. All right. so. That was just a real quick introduction to, you know, what are we looking at when it comes to Next Tech? We saw the PM, we saw the EMR, and I just kind of want to show you or talk about three major points for our newest features, right? So we already had online scheduling for existing patients through our patient portal, uh, but that really wasn't all of the features that everybody needs. Uh, you know, we want to, you want to let patients schedule, but sometimes, you know, we want to charge a fee for them to be able to schedule. There's many reasons for this, mostly just to kind of prevent no-shows. So we have built a new online scheduling tool that will let you charge. It puts the, the scheduling behind a paywall where the patient has to pay your consult or appointment fee in order to actually schedule it. It's a huge feature that just was released. We're getting a lot of positive feedback on. Um, second real big feature is the ER rate payment automation. You know, so ERAs come in, they can be auto-posted. But one thing that we found is that the digital form of the payment tends to hit the system in some situations quicker than it hits your bank account. And that can cause reports to be a little bit weird. So what we did is we built a holding area for your ERAs so you can make sure that they are applied inside NextTech the same day the money hits your bank account, making sure that all your accounting reports line up from the get-go. It's a big deal. All right, last, uh, more online scheduling stuff, but really because uh, our clients wanted it, everybody asked for it. So we built a very nice online scheduling tool that allows new patients to schedule as well. They're subject to the same paywall, but they don't have to be an existing patient in order to schedule. You can take anybody, any hot lead coming off the streets, let them schedule, let them pay that conference or the consult fee, and get them in, have a patient account created. So this is just some of the stuff we're working on. These are probably the three things we're the most excited about right now. There's all kinds of other stuff going on. If you guys uh, want to hit us up for a demo, we'll be happy to show you the rest of that stuff. So I think that's all for me. I'm going to go ahead and toss it back to Cassie. Thanks, Royce. That was so awesome. We love a little taste into what things we have been developing and things that are coming in the future. Although we're one of the oldest <laughs> companies in the industry for the EHR and practice management, we're definitely up to date when it comes to features. Um and involvement of things that are developing product-wise. As we move forward, I wanted to talk about some real results that we've seen in our practices. Um, top left, 78% post-consult patient engagement, um, meaning that, yes, maybe you have a consult about it, kind of put some seeds in their mind for some treatments that they're wanting. That way they can come home, look it up, and you know learn more about the procedures that you guys are promoting in the practice. 11% incremental purchases via app slash portal engagement, 26% um, increase in conversions, which is huge because not only are we educating our patients about new procedures or procedures that, you know, we just recommend to them in general, 26% of that is a little bit 
more on the conversion side, which is awesome. And then 53% increase in upsells. So whether that's adding on, you know, Botox to a lip filler appointment on the aesthetic side or being able to do a full cancer check for skin, being able to add that onto appointment, anything that you're looking to add or upsell with, just being able to make it a one-stop shop is not only better for you, for your business, but also for your patients to help save time and allocate costs there. As we're wrapping up, we're still looking to get energized with efficient software. We want to reduce staff turnover by lowering frustrations, eliminate billing errors, and avoid sacrificing patient care. We want to accurately match the patients to their medical records, and we want to provide a happy experience which spreads through word of mouth, resulting in more referrals. I hope you enjoyed our time today. I sure know we did. If you have any questions or would like to see more, please reach out at the email below.